Okay, so here's our table of data that we're going to try to look for duplicates inside of. I didn't make it very long, just so it was easier to show you. Imagine most of the times when you're doing this, you might have a couple hundred or a couple thousand rows. It's going to work the exact same way. And I'll show you ahead of time the duplicates that we expect to find is that uh, we put this one in here, Lori Boynton's in here twice, and Yanis Parr's in here twice. So let's start out uh, with the conditional formatting way to find these duplicates. So we're going to highlight the entire range that we're going to look at. And we're going to go to Format. We've already done it over here. That's why you see this menu. But to get that menu to come up, you would go to Format and Conditional Formatting. Did that, so we'll come over here and we're going to add another rule. The Apply To range is already filled out. In this case, it's going to be A2 to C23. It's just easier to select that with your mouse before you start. And under Format Rules, let's do the drop down and Format Cells If, and we'll go down to Custom Formula Is. And then I already have this formula on my clipboard. I'm going to put it in the description of the video. And you can also copy this entire worksheet if you want to visit the website that I linked up there. Uh, but you can just use these formulas. So let's paste this, and then we'll talk about what's happening here. So this formula is going to vary based on your data. The inside of the formula is repeated for each column. So that function is going to get shorter or longer depending on how many columns your table has. But it's going to be the same basic thing. And what it's doing, let's come over to the left. So conditional formatting works from the top down and from the left to the right. So that formula that we put in, the custom formula is box, evaluates A2 first. So keep in mind, it's written as if it's only looking in A2. And then when it moves down and to the right, it's going to increment the same way it would if you auto-filled it inside the spreadsheet. So in other words, in everywhere that A2 is in that formula and it's not fixed with a dollar sign, it's going to become B2 here, and it's going to become A3 here. It's very important where those dollar signs are because when you put a dollar sign in a formula, it fixes the formula so when you move it around, the part that has a dollar sign doesn't move. If you want to see more information on how to fix formulas, I would check out the video that I've linked in the upper right hand corner before you go any further. Check that out and come back if you want to have a full understanding or just copy and paste the formula. That's fine too. You don't have to understand how your car works to drive it, right? So if we look at the table that we highlighted, the formula is working by highlighting any instance that is repeated below it. So it's highlighting the first occurrence of Lori and by the time it gets to the second one, it doesn't see Lori again below it. So it doesn't highlight that one. And if that's all you need to do, then you're done, right? But there's always different situations and you may need a situation where you wanna use a function to do the highlighting. You don't wanna use conditional formatting for whatever reason. So let's go over to the right. So let's say we're done on the conditional formatting. Let's put in another column and we're going to call it uh, duplicate question mark. So is this duplicated? Let's grab this formatting so it looks like a header. And we're going to do another formula here. Let me grab it on my little cheat sheet. So the formula that we're going to use here is we're going to say, saying, hey, if when you count this, if you see this same value more than once, write duplicate or leave it blank. Type enter and Lyndon Skipper isn't duplicated. We'll drag this formula down. So I just went into that blue rectangle and I hovered over the lower right-hand portion of it where it's a square. I'm holding down the left mouse key now and I'm dragging down. Then I'll let go of the left mouse key. It's going to auto-fill that formula all the way down. And this identified the duplicates. So this behaved a little bit differently than the conditional formatting. It identified the value after it's duplicated instead of before. I don't know which way is better, right? Depends on what you're doing, but these are doing the same thing, but they're doing a little bit differently. So if you wanna see how to remove these duplicates, you don't even have to check for them first. You don't have to identify them. You can use the function just to remove them. It's called unique and that video is coming up next. Thanks.